Shalom. I want to start off by giving all praises to Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham Rakakurash. Yahweh is the true, holy, and powerful name of the Heavenly Father. Bahasham meaning in the name. Yahweh Shai is the true, holy, and powerful name of his only begotten Son, who is the Savior of the nation of Israel, starting off with the elect within the nation of Israel. And Israel consists of these so called Negroes, Hispanics, and Native Americans, as well as your Israelite foreigners scattered abroad. That may look like the nations where you've been scattered to, but our Israelites. And I also want to give double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone who rule well, peace and salutations to the hopeful elect, pushing out this word in all sincerity and truth. All right, this is the brother you call from the GMS branch on Des Moines. I will coming back at you with another lesson inspired by the Holy Spirit. And um, Lord's will, uh, I may entitle this lesson, The half as Sacrifice. All right, and um, this is actually inspired through a reading of uh, Malachi, the first chapter. And, um, you know, just to give a little background, all right, in the ancient world, okay, uh, uh, before the time of, uh, before Yahweh's sacrifice, all right, we had to give up uh, bullocks, lambs, and so on and so forth, according to whatever offering we were doing or whatever sin sacrifice that we were doing and so on and so forth. All right. And um, today's time period, now we're doing uh, spiritual sacrifices, as it is written in the book of uh Let's grab this in the book of 1 Peter, chapter 2 and verse 5. It says, uh, Ye also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to the Most High by Yahweh Shai Mashiach. All right, so we're still doing sacrifices, but they're spiritual. All right, and our spiritual sacrifices still have to be acceptable to the Most High. All right. Uh, through Yahweh, uh, Yahweh, uh, through Yahweh Shai, man. Okay, we can't just give up any type of mediocre uh, sacrifice as we're gonna go into in this chapter in Malachi the first, uh, in, in Malachi one. All right, and just to land back, just to show you the different forms of those spiritual sacrifices. All right, uh, let's grab this in the Book of Sirach, chapter thirty-five, in verse uh, <clears throat> uh, one. He that keepeth the law bringeth offering enough. He that taketh heed to the commandment offereth a peace offering. He that requiteth a good turn offereth fine flour. And he that giveth alms sacrificeth praise. To depart from wickedness is a thing pleasing to the Lord. And to forsake unrighteousness is a propitiation, which is an appeasement of wrath. All right, so these different spiritual sacrifices that we're putting up, all right, these are uh, appeasing the Lord's wrath. All right, so that we don't uh, uh, receive destruction, man. Okay, doing these things through faith. All right, verse four, thou shalt not appear empty before the Lord. All right, so we have to be doing these sacrifices, man. Okay, we can't come before the Lord empty. All right, so we have to have spiritual sacrifices. All right, whether it's showing forth in the bro brotherhood, requiting a good turn. That's, you know, uh, uh, somebody does good for you. You return that favor, man, doing good for them. And, uh, you know, and, and it lists them. All right. But it says, uh, uh, for all these things are to be done because of the commandment, the offering of the righteous maketh the altar fat and the sweet savor thereof is before the most high. The sacrifice of a just man is acceptable and the memorial thereof shall never be forgotten. All right. So once again, showing you that, uh, this mention, this didn't mention that all bullocks, goats, and lambs. But it's showing you that the work that we're putting forth towards this ministry, towards Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, are trying to be obedient and actually following his word. All right. These are different forms of us actually putting up those sacrifices, man. All right. And once again, they have to be acceptable sacrifices. Now, let's grab this real quick in the book, book of uh, Deuteronomy. I believe it's uh, Deuteronomy 17. All right. In verse one. It says, uh, thou shalt not sacrifice unto the Lord thy power, any bullock or sheep wherein is blemish or any evil favoredness, for that is an abomination unto the Lord, Yahweh thy power. Now, what you had our people doing is that they would have a, a healthy ram, a healthy goat. OK, but instead of uh, giving that up for a sacrifice. All right. What would they do? They'll take a, a lamb with some type of ble a blemish. All right. It could have had a, a, a broken bone or whatever the case it may be, and then still go forth and try and sacrifice it as if the Lord was accepting it, man. Okay? So applying these things in the spirit, all right? We don't want to give the Lord half-ass um, energy, man. All right? Half-ass energy, half-ass half sacrifices, 
Okay, spiritual sacrifices, man, or doing it with the wrong attitude, mentality. Okay, we don't want to uh, uh, do these things grudgingly and so on and so forth. All right, we want to give a sacrifice that's acceptable unto him, man. Okay. So going uh, into this in the book of Malachi, the first chapter, Malachi chapter one and verse six, it says, a son honoreth his father and a servant his master. If then I be a father, where's mine honor? And if I be a master, where's my fear? Saith the Lord, Yahweh of hosts unto you, O priests that despise my name. And you say, wherein have we despised thy name? Right. So a key point to consider here is that the Lord is speaking to the priests, all right? And we're priests today after the order of Melchizedek, right? So this is likened unto the leaders of the people. It says, from the uh, priest's lips shall thou uh, um, get knowledge, roughly paraphrasing. I believe it's in the same book, all right? It says how they should seek knowledge at the priest's lips, okay? So the men out in the highways and byways and so on and so forth, they're liken unto the priest of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. All right. So keep this in mind whom the Lord is specifically addressing here. Verse uh, seven, it says, uh, ye offer polluted bread upon mine altar and ye say, wherein have we polluted thee? And that ye say the table of the Lord is contemptible. Now let's read this in the NLT. Ye have shown contempt by offering defiled sacrifices on my altar. Then you ask, how have we defiled the sacrifices? You defiled them by saying the altar of the Lord deserves no respect. Okay? Because the Lord wants the best of the best from us. All right? He wants our, uh, he wants our, um, our best effort. All right? As the uh, Elder, Micah, uh, uh, Elder Micah Allah out in uh, LA, the big bro out there, uh, he just recently had mentioned in one of his lessons, man, uh, about, you know, giving A plus work. All right? So that should be our mentality, man. Wanting to give the Lord the best of the best, right? It says, um, verse 8 in the KJV, And if ye offer the blind for sacrifice, is it not evil? And if ye offer the lame and sick, is it not evil? Offer it now unto thy governor. Will he be pleased with thee or accept thy person, saith the Lord of hosts, right? So the Lord is like, here it is. You're giving these blind animals, these weak sacrifices. <laughs> Isn't that wrong? <laughs> All right. But then you expect me to accept it. And then the Lord's like, look, if you offer this unto anybody else, would they accept it? But you expect me to accept it. All right. So it says, verse uh, nine. And now I pray you beseech the most high that he will be gracious unto us. This had been by your means. Will he regard your person, saith the Lord of hosts? Now I'm going to read this in the NLT, verse nine. Go ahead, beg. Go ahead, beg the most high to be merciful to you. But when you bring that kind of offering, why should he show you any favor at all? Ask the Lord of heaven's armies. That's right. All right. Because what you put in is what you get out. All right. Plain and simple. OK. It says, why should you <laughs> why should he show you any favor at all? So we want to keep this in mind as we're putting up these sacrifices, because it's not enough just to, uh, 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 you know, or, or being lazy with it. Uh, well, I, I, I just threw up the lesson, threw one up, you know, without any actual effort or, you know, it's not in, inspired in the spirit. Now, there's times where you got to draw it out. You know what I'm saying? And the spirit gets flowing. All right. But if you just got this mindset, oh, I'm just let me just throw this up to meet a quota. All right. I think the Lord wants to, uh, is accepting uh, that sacrifice with that type of uh, mentality, you know. So we have to keep in mind the attitude that we have towards doing this work as well, man. All right, one issue that the Lord had with our people is that in the book of Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, what does it say? All right. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 40. Let's see, where is it at? Mm. Yeah, verse 47. It says, because thou service... I'm going to start at 45. Moreover, all these curses shall come upon thee and shall pursue thee and overtake thee till thou be destroyed because thou hearkenest not unto the voice of the Lord, Yahweh thy power, to keep his commandments and his statutes which he commanded, commanded thee. And they shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder and upon thy seed forever because thou servest not the Lord, Yahweh thy power, with joyfulness and with gladness of heart for the abundance of all things. Right. So uh, part of the issue that the Lord had with our people is that they weren't serving the Lord with joyfulness and gladness of heart, all right? They were looking at it as if it was a burden, okay? Which is going to go into in this book of Malachi, man. So the attitude that we have towards this sacrifice, towards doing this work, all right, the Lord is looking at that as well, man. 
The scriptures talk about how the Lord searcheth the heart and tries the reins, man. So once again, we don't want to do these things grudgingly. Okay. So going back to Malachi chapter one and verse uh, 10, it says, who is there even among you that would shut the doors for not? Neither do ye kindle fire on mine altar for not. I have no pleasure in you, saith the Lord of hosts. Neither will I accept an offering at your hand. Now, I'm going to read this in the NLT as well. How I wish one of you would shut the temple doors so that these worthless sacrifices could not be offered. So the Lord was like, you might as well <laughs> shut the doors to the temple. All right. Might as well. I'm not going to accept this. OK. What's the point? Of, and you got guys that are out there, man. Which is the scary thing is guys that are out there that's doing lessons and as as Yahweh I spoke about people saying it's going to be people that are saying, Lord, Lord, haven't we prophesied in thy name and done this and done that and cast out devils? So you have different individuals that are putting up sacrifices that the Lord is not accepting, man. All right. He's looking at that sacrifice as if it's a it's a, a lamb with blemish. All right. A bullock that's blemished. OK. Not accepting those things, man. It says, uh, how I wish one of you would shut the temple door so that these worthless sacrifices could not be offered. I am not pleased with you, says, says the Lord of heaven's armies, and I would not accept your offerings. All right. It says, verse 11, for uh, in the KJV again, for from the rising of the sun, even unto the going down of the same, my name shall be great among the Gentiles. And in every place, incense shall be offered unto my name and a pure offering for my name shall be great among the heathen, saith the Lord, Yahweh of hosts. Verse 12, but ye have profaned it and that ye say the table of the Lord is polluted and the fruit thereof, even his meat is contemptible. All right. It says, uh. Right, uh, NLT, but ye dishonor my name with your actions by bringing contemptible food. You are saying it's all right to defile the Lord's table. All right. So we don't want to slip into this mentality of thinking that mediocrity, the Lord is just accepting of it, man. OK, because this is the mentality that the priest that the Lord is addressing in this uh, chapter uh, uh, slipped into. All right. They, they began began to look at doing the work of the Lord as a uh, as a burden. All right. God uh, didn't care what what type of sacrifice they were they were putting up, man. All right. And not even not even uh, realizing it, man. OK, it says um, it says, uh, you said also, behold, what a weariness it is. And you have snuffed at it, man. <laughs> you said also, because behold, what a weariness it is it. And you have snuffed at it saith the Lord of hosts, and ye brought that which was torn and the lame and the sick, thus ye brought an offering. Should I accept this of your hand, saith the Lord? And I'm going to read this in the NLT. You say it's too hard to serve the Lord, and you turn up your noses at my commands, says the Lord of heaven's armies. Think of it. Animals that are stolen and crippled and sick are being presented as offerings. Should I accept from you such offerings as these? Ask the Lord. All right. So once again, man, all right, we don't want to give the Lord some half-assed bogus sacrifices, man, and just expect the Lord to accept it, all right, just because we gave the sacrifice, man, all right? It says, verse 14, but cursed be the deceiver, which hath in his flock a male, and voweth and sacrificeth unto the Lord a corrupt thing. For I am a great king, saith the Lord of hosts, and my name is dreadful among the heathen, in the NLT. Cursed is the cheat. Who promises to give a fine ram from his flock, but then sacrifices a defective one to the Lord. All right. So here it is. It's within that individual's ability to sacrifice a proper sacrifice. OK, and I'm going to apply it in the spirit to, to, to give the effort or whatever the case it may be. All right. I like the brother. Um, um, it's actually the spirit because it just came to my mind. We were kind of talking about this last week. All right. Big bro, uh, Mithati, he had pretty much mentioned in our group chat, like, you know, not giving the Lord, uh, uh um, how did he word it, man? Well, I'm a word it in, in my terms, man. Like, like, <laughs> you know, uh, you're the, the sloppy seconds, <laughs> so to speak, man. All right. You know, just giving the Lord, uh, uh, here it is. You got all this time in a day. All right. All this time, but you just want to, uh, squeeze in, uh, uh, 10 minutes real quick for the Lord. All right. That's it. 
I got all this time where you was doing X, Y, and Z, where you could have sacrificed the time where you was on the video game, you or could have sacrificed the time where you was with your woman, or could have sacrificed the time where you was doing all these other things, okay? Where you could have given that unto the Lord, all right? But instead, you wanted to give uh, the bare minimum of almost nothing, all right? To Yahweh Bashem Yahweh We don't want to uh, get comfortable in that type of mentality because things happen, we're in the flesh, okay? Sometimes we lose battles to the flesh, right? But we can't uh, uh, we can't look at that as being acceptable, all right? Because the Lord isn't accepting those uh, types of sacrifices, man. As we're reading here, he didn't accept that even with the carnal sacrifices back then when Jake was doing these things, all right? It says, uh, curses is, is the cheat who promises to give a, a fine ram from his flock, but then sacrifices a defective one to the Lord. For I'm a great king, says the Lord of heaven's armies, and my name is feared among the nations. All right, so I just wanted to touch on that through the spirit, man. Uh, Lord's what I was edifying. I'm going to give all praises to Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rakakudash. Double honors to the elders and apostles of great millstone who rule well. Peace and salutations to the hopeful elect. Pushing out this word in all sincerity and the truth. With that, I'm going to say Shalom.